Um, now, when I think about books that have Andrew Scarth as the author on the front of them, I think of things like The Great Laxey Wheel and The Great Laxey Mines mm. and um, anything to do with the Manx Electric Railway. But you've headed up the valley, as it were, uh, towards Snay Fell for the latest publication. Tell me about the book. I have indeed. It's um, I've say I've done a few books now and all of them have got a connection with Laxey. Um, so that's as far afield as I've, I've really gone. So, yes, you're quite right. Moving up the Laxey Valley several miles is a bit away from my unusual sort of area. It's to do with the Snaefell Mine and the Snaefell Mine disaster, which happened 125 years ago this May in 1897. So it was written to uh, to commemorate the anniversary of, of the disaster. Now, before we get on to the disaster itself, I mean, for people who um, either didn't go to Laxey School and didn't do their Laxey Wheel project like I did, mm-hmm. um, but um, for people who aren't um, fully up to speed in terms of what Laxey Valley and all the way up to Snaefell was like back in the mining days. This was a massive industrial area, wasn't it, really? I mean, it was, and we tend to forget now. I mean, I am biased, but you go to Laxey, it's probably one of the prettiest and scenic places on the island. But you do tend to forget that going back in the 1870s, it was a a highly industrialised, one of the biggest um, lead mines in Britain at the time. The output was huge, nearly a 1,000 people working there, and the landscape was different than it is now. I mean, the, the Laxey Wheel itself is um, an industrial um, wheel, as it were. You mm. know, it's become a big tourist mm. attraction. But it wasn't just the Laxey Mines, it was the Agnish Mines. And as you mentioned, of course, the, the Snaefell Mines, all within this sort of one valley, wasn't it? There was indeed. I mean, the, as I said, the Laxey Mine was very successful at that time. And what happened, there was various other mining companies started in the neighbourhood, in the Coney Valley, Glenroy area, Snaefell area, um, seeking to sort of get the same level of success that the Laxey mine had had. Um, so there's all these smaller little mines around the sort of perimeter area of, of the Great Laxey mine. And all they had, I have to say, um, none of them were particularly successful. Now, when it comes to Laxey Village itself, as you say, today mm. it's a very pretty village. Mm. The the scars from its industrial past um, are largely gone. You, mm. you can find some if you know where to look, obviously. Mm. If you go up on the Snaefell Mountain Railway and you look down into the valley at the bottom of Snaefell, there is a very definite industrial scar at the um, at the site of the Snaefell Mine, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's at the top of the valley, at the base of the mountain. So you go up on the tram, look at, at the tram window over the valley, and you can see the remains of the buildings, and particularly the dead heaps, which are the waste um, stone from the mine, tipped on the lower foothills of um, Snaefell, so it's very, very visible from the tram. And you can see that uh, obviously there's quite a high content of what would it be lead in there, because there's, still, there's no weeds growing on them, is there really? No, no I mean they, they were, the mine was, the dead heaps was reworked in the 1950s by another company, but as you say, there's nothing growing on them, so um, there must be a reason for that. There must be, <laughs> there must be something to not go in into. <laughs> um, so let's go back in time then to the the Snowfall mine disaster. Because uh, how many people would have been working the mine at this time? There was about eighty people or something like that at, the t- at that time. It's not it's not a huge employer, but nevertheless a very very valuable in the area. And what would have been a normal day's work for a miner at the the Snowfall mine? You know, from getting up in the morning. Well, um, as we said, inaccessible place. Um, so the first thing you have to do is walk there. So that could take about an hour and a half. Some people, um, well, one gentleman I, I came across in my research lived at the Kerrimore at Solby and wow. walked for two hours every morning over the hills to Snaefell Mine and then home again at night and did that every day of the week apart from Sundays. Um, so current, current, current government would love that. That's yeah, very active it, travel, isn't it? It is. It's very green, but <laughs> not, not for me. I would say I wouldn't want to do that every day. Um, so you get to the mine at six o'clock and then you now probably three quarters of an hour climbing down wooden ladders to the bottom of the shaft so you spent seven hours underground um hacking away at the rock mining and then climb all the way back up the ladders again to the surface a thousand feet back to the mine and then walk home again and they did that sort of six days a week that was a hard life back then it was wasn't hard it? life yeah uh, no in terms of the the mining disaster itself um, what was different about that day what actually happened well, the day itself, when it dawned, it was a, apparently a beautiful spring May morning, 10th of May, 1897. So the day itself dawned no different than any other day. Um, the miners walked up to the mine, they they grouped together at the top of the shaft, and on the signal they started climbing down, and, and everything seemed normal at that time. Um, within minutes, according to the newspaper reports, three or four of them reappeared at the surface, gasping for breath, and um, they couldn't breathe. And they, they basically said that they thought the mine was on fire or there was poisonous gas underground. Um, and they realised they had a, a suddenly a big emergency disaster on their hands to deal with. And there was men stuck down in the shaft, overcome by the gas um, and couldn't get out. And what was the outcome? Um, the outcome, unfortunately, was 20 miners died and they managed to rescue a few of them. Um, and it remains the worst accident in Manx mining history and I also think in terms of accidents that happened on the Isle of Man 
in general, it's still up there amongst the, the top. There's probably only about three or four in the terms of casualties and deaths. Actually, worse. So it's not just a significant accident in mining. It is in Manx history in general. So what sort of things have you uncovered in your research for this new book that's coming out to uh, to mark the anniversary? I, I, there's a lot of... Um, I've put together for the first time the sort of story of the companies and such like and, and how that all went together and some of the... It's the word skullduggery that was going on and <laughs> accusations of all these things of, of shareholders fiddling other shareholders and directors of home. That's, well, that was quite an interesting story. Um, one of the things I'm particularly interested in is Captain Cooley, who was the, the um, mine captain at the time, whose name is forever associated with Snaefell Mine. He was the man that went down to rescue the dying miners and got his bravery medal. Um, I'm lucky to speak to a number of his descendants and gather together, which I think for the first time is, is family history from various sources, and there's a lovely little story about Captain Cooley. So it's the human side, I think, has, has been particularly interesting. As we said, all this like, walking to work every day, the working conditions and such like. Now, where do you start when um, putting one of these books together? Because um, I've got a copy of this book, I've got a copy of your mm. Great Laxy Mind book, which, let's be mm. honest, you know, is, uh, is an opus in itself. Mm. Um, that When you sit down with a blank piece of paper as an author... How do you decide what goes in, what what doesn't go in, and at which point in your research you have to say stop? Because I can imagine you can always find more people with more stories, more information. That is a difficulty, yeah. You do have to draw the line at some point and say, I'm going to publish, because if you're always looking for that nth degree more of information, you're probably never going to find it, never publish. So, yes, you've got to draw a line. The way I've always worked it is that things like the, the mind book, I've always got favourite topics. So one of the favourite topics in the Great Laxy Mind book was the Laxy Wheel, so... I always start with writing about something in particular I find easy and then just build up around that. And uh, in terms of actually getting it from, uh, you know, your first scribblings at home, as it were, to, to publishing, uh, who gives you assistance? Who helps you out? Right. Well, um, th- this one is on the first, um, it's the first book been published by Laxian Land Heritage Trust, which I'm chairman of. So the directors of that at the committee meeting um, gave me the wholehearted backing to do that. I then wrote to Culture Vanning, who've been very, very supportive and gave a grant and delighted to say they've supported it as well. Um, so with the two bodies there, we've, we've worked together, get the thing published. So it's, it's published by the Heritage Trust at Laxey. So obviously, if people want to get hold of this uh, this book, looking back at um, a dark period in, in Manx mining history, but also a very, very fascinating mm. one in time for the anniversary. Mm. This is where you can do your commercial plug. So where can people find the book? Right, so do the commercial plug is... Um, Local bookshops, the Lexicon in Douglas, the Bridge Bookshop, Port Erin and Ramsey, um, JJ Ribbons in Laxey, um, Max National Heritage, their museum shop, and it's also up the Snaefell Summit Hotel. So if you want to get a trip up on the tram and see the mine that we've just talked about from the tram, if you get to the top up there, the book's on sale at the summit as well. Brilliant. I can recommend the, the scones with jam and cream up there as well. Absolutely, They're very nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so from your perspective, here we go, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Oh, no. um, you've done the the book on the Great Laxey Mine, of which I'm sure um, there are still copies available if you've not got yours yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done the uh, the book now on the Snaefell mining disaster. Where's next, Andrew? What's next? A rest, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much involved with restoring some of the rolling stock in the MER at the moment, so I think we'll do that. But I've I would like to do a book about um, a smaller book about Laxey Fire Brigade and the, and the significant fires that happened in Laxey over the years, such things like the the Laxey flour mills and how that led to the evolution of the fire brigade, which was um, managed by the Laxey commissioners at the time. But also talking to my good friend Peter Geddes in the Mines Group, and we'd like to do a book, I think, of um, mining in general on the island. Um, across and um, Peter and his colleagues that go underground have got some superb underground pictures and I think that would make a very nice book as well to show people what it's actually like underground. Well thanks for coming in today Andrew and uh, mm. we'll see you back here for the chat when you've published that book okay? Yep. Absolutely it's a deal.